Well, like anything in life, nothing is perfect, not even me. <laughs> All right. So with that in mind, we have to account for times when users enter the wrong password or the wrong username. Now, we need to give the users also as the guideline for us to have a good user interface is we need to give the users cues or visual cues so that they know something is wrong. There's different ways to do that. We could probably put a text or a pop up or uh, you can be extreme and start changing the whole view color and all those certain things. But we want to be subtle, but effective. So what I'm trying to say here is that when we run our app, when we log in, try to log in something and enter, we get an error, but we're not able to log into user obviously. But as you can see here, we just get these warnings, which are not necessarily related to what we're doing here. It's something else. So we need to get the users to know that something is not right. Either they have entered the wrong password or both password and username. So that means inside after we say counter here, because remember what we're doing here, once we get our user row, we created this counter and we say while row has next, meaning that we have an item, so we have found our match, we are going to increase our counter to one. In this case, just going to be one. Why? Because we just found our match in this case, right? So for now here, what we did, we have this welcome string that we added here so that I can show you that this is indeed working. Now we have here, if counter is one, meaning that we have found our match, we can say login successful, which is wonderful. But now we're going to add an else statement here. We're going to say else, if no match was found, that means there are there is an error, most likely the user made a mistake. So we need to let the user know that they have made an error. Now, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another class that what it's going to do is will allow us to shake our user interface. Specifically, we'll be able to shake our username and our login password here, our password text views, so that the user will know something is wrong with the values they've entered in username and or password. So for that to work, um, I figure I'll create a class, a different class that will allow us to have this shaker animation. So I'm going to create another package here. Let's call this package, call this animation, animations, in fact, it should be animations like this. Okay, inside here, I'm going to right click, say new, I need a Java class, and I'm going to call this shaker class, All right, very simple class. So I'm going to have a private and I'm going to call this translate transition. Okay, that comes from JavaFX animation, right? And we're going to call this, let's call this TT or translation like this, translate transition. Okay, so it will translate, meaning it will move from one position to the next. Then I'm going to say public. I'm going to create a, let's go ahead and create a constructor here. Okay, uh, let me, and in this constructor, I'm going to pass in a node. Now, if you remember correctly, a node is anything that we put inside of our screen, inside of our stage, inside of our, of our scene. Okay, so a button is a node, a, a anchor pane is a node. Essentially, all of our controls are considered a node. Okay, so let me go ahead and say enter here to import our Java JavaFX scene node there. Okay. I'm going to instantiate our translate transition object. Let's say new translate transition object as such. And what I'm going to pass, I'm going to pass the duration. Let's say duration millis in milliseconds. It's going to be about 50 milliseconds, which is which is a very, very, very tiny time frame. I'm going to pass the node here put this in a second line and close this so we have more space. All right. All right, so we're constructing our, our, our class here. And then I'm going to say this translation object, I'm going to set from x, I'm going to say from zero, I'm going to put f to say it's a float. Okay, and translate transition, I'm going to set 
by x value. It's going to be about 10f translation, translate transition, that set cycle. I want to set the cycle in which the, the movement will happen, right? How many times it will go back and forth in a certain time unit. In this case, I'm going to say just two times. So one, two, right? Left and right. You'll see that in action. And I'm going to say translation that set auto reverse to true. That way it reverses back and forth. Okay. And then here we're going to have a public void method called shake. Well, this shake will just take our translate transition and start playing it. Okay. So play from start like this. Okay. That's the beauty of having our animation. So JavaFX is very rich. So there's a lot of classes that we can instantiate and create cool animations such as the one we are creating here. All right, so now that we have this class, if we go back to our login here, we can use that class. So inside here where we say else, which means something has happened, an error has happened, the user um, may have not entered the correct credentials. We're going to create shake shaker class here. I'm going to call shaker is equal to new shaker. And we have to pass a node. Again, a node is any element that we've put inside of our scene. In this case, let's start with our user login username, which is a text field. All right. And I'm going to say shaker dot. I'm going to call the shake method. You see here the beauty of user of object oriented programming, right? We have this class shaker, right? And then we have this shaker constructor here, which we use to pass our node. Could be a button, a text view, a text field, anything. And then we start putting together our animation. So the first thing we did, we, we instantiated our translate transition because that's the animation we are going to create. And we pass the time. It's going to be about 50 milliseconds very small time frame for this animation to happen and we pass have to pass in the node the object that we are animating which in this case we just pass in our text field and of course we set the from it's going to be from the middle right from x zero um, we're going to then set by how much we are going to translate in this case it's going to be y x right so left right if we wanted to say from y we can also say if we wanted to say translate transition that's set by y, we could have done that as well. And in 3D, we could have done by z. Okay, so we can do all these sort of things. And I will let you use your imagination and try this out. And then we say the cycle count, like how many times is this going to happen in 50 milliseconds? Well, two times, and then we reverse everything to true. And then we have this member method here which just calls our translation object and play animation from the beginning okay so that's how you can see here now we can create our shaker object and pass in the object or the node or the controller that we want to apply the animation to which is in this case is login user and then we call shaker shake all right save this let's run and see if this works so i'm going to purposely add a gibberish user here and pay attention here. Look at that. Look at that. You see that? Yes, that just tells us that, hey, something is not right. Very, very nice indeed. All right, isn't that cool? What if we added the Y translation as well? Let's see what's that gonna have, what's that gonna do? Let's go back to shaker here. Like I said, I'm going to say translation, translate, transition, that's set by Y. Let's give about 23 F, All right? So if you go like this, you can see it goes back and forth, but also goes down and up X, Y direction. Okay, let's go shaker here. I'm going to change this back. Get rid of that, okay? Change things and add things as you wish, but at least for now we have that. Let's run once again. Hello, something strange, and you can see it's working. 
Very nice. Very nice. All right. Uh, it would be really awesome if we also included the other object, right? The other, uh, the password text field. So I'm going to create another shaker here object. A shaker one. I'm going to say new shaker. I'm going to pass the password, login password. And we're going to do the same thing. Shake. Now, this is really bad naming. Let's change these names here for, uh, we're going to call this user name shaker. Obviously, I have to change the name as well there. It's going to be password shaker. Okay, I like this much better. All right, let's go ahead and give it a run. This time, if we put any gibberish or anything that it's not found in our database, both of them are going to shake and take them back. Yes, very nice. All right, so now if we go ahead and say J bond and give the correct credentials, say okay, then you notice it says welcome James, login successful, and the shaking did not happen. All right, very good. So we're able to add small thing, but a very uh, important one because now we, we are communicating with our user users to let them know that something is not right and they have to fix it. Okay, perfect. I'll see you in the next video.